Welcome to Kathy Neptune's Kitchen. I'm here today to give you recipes and tips to make your time in the kitchen fun, fast, and fabulous. And if you took the summer off uh, from your kitchen, it's time to get back in there with a great fall menu that I have. It's a good recipe for your family, but it also has a terrific wow factor. If you want to make something special for company, it's pretty amazing. And I hope you're going to try it. So we're going to do a uh, roast pork loin, which is very lean. If you're um, trying to cut back on fats and calories, it's a great value as well. So um, we're going to do uh, the pork loin, and we're going to stuff it with kielbasa. And today, in the theme of low fat and flavor, uh, I'm using a turkey kielbasa. So you can feel free to use any type of kielbasa of your choice. And we have this wonderful pork loin, and we're going to accompany that with a really nice seasonal cabbage side dish that has pasta and apples added to it that's done in a stir-fry uh, type of uh, preparation. And it's something you can certainly do ahead of time, prepare all the ingredients, overnight, let them set, and prepare them when you get home for um, busy moms and dads that are working. So we have this beautiful pork loin, and you can trim it down to whatever size. And we want to thank Shaw's once again for underwriting this fabulous local programming and for providing these fabulous fresh ingredients for us. Now, you want to have a very sharp knife in your kitchen to do this. And I'll tell you, most of the accidents that occur in your kitchen are because of dull knives. So when you're trying to slice a tomato and that knife slides because it's not sharp enough, it's not a good thing. So I encourage you to have a very, very sharp knife to do this. And I've taken the pork loin, and if you keep in mind that your knife needs to be perpendicular to your cutting board area, then you'll get a really good slice right through from the center. If you're not comfortable trying to go all the way through, you can go halfway, turn the pork around, and tr do the other side too. Always keep it in mind that you want to keep your fingers away from the blade, but you can kind of put your hand on the top surface and feel the blade of the knife. And I've done one side this way and the other side, turn the blade this way and you can even take your blade either up or down and slice a little bit through. So on three areas. And what we're doing is forming a pocket. And you're going to take the kielbasa. Un, um, you don't have to brown it at all because most of these are pre-cooked. But we're going to take the kielbasa and push it through the center of your pork loin. Like so. And try and get it straight. But if it's not, nobody should be looking that closely anyway. And then we're going to perform a surgical slice there. And then it's flush with the edge of your pork. And it doesn't matter. You could even leave it sticking out on both sides in case there's a little shrinkage in the meat. But you can trim the ends. And this is all going to cook together. And it gives it a most fabulous smoky flavor that permeates the inside and even to the exterior of your pork loin. So it's got great, great flavor and seasoning. And I'm gonna let that set for a minute and just make sure we're preheating our skillet over here. And I'm gonna put the other one on for the cabbage stir fry. And we're gonna season our meat with a little bit of salt and a little bit, I'm gonna reach over here for some onion powder and some garlic powder. And you want to use garlic powder because if you use fresh garlic in this, it's going to burn and it's going to sear and you don't want it to become bitter. So whenever you're um, pan roasting or um, roasting in an oven for more than uh, 15 minutes, you always want to use powders. And we're going to take, and I've added a little bit of butter to the skillet here and preheating it so that it's bubbling. And we're going to season, here's another technique that's very useful. 
instead of seasoning the other side of the beef, I'm sorry, the beef, not the beef, the pork, sprinkle your pan with your seasonings and lay it on the unseasoned side because you've already seasoned the top of your roast and you place it in there as such. And we're just going to brown that off and finish it off in the oven at 350 for about half an hour to 45 minutes and always use a meat thermometer and follow the directions and instructions on your meat thermometer guide for roasting a pork loin. So we're going to let that set in there. And over here we have a little bit of butter melting. And I'm going to take some sliced cabbage and I'm going to chop up an onion that we have here, a raw onion. Move this to the side. And I'm going to use, you probably remember my food chopper, and I had so many people calling to ask me, where do I get one of these choppers? And I want to remind you that you can contact me on my email address for any questions you might have or resources for these fabulous tools because you need good tools in the kitchen. I'm a real believer of having the best tools. Just when you build a house, you need the tools. If you're cooking in your kitchen, you need the tools. So once again, you get in a bad mood and you can chop. And it's so much easier to do it this way in chopping your onions than doing them by hand. So we're going to put that there and take your onions and put them into the skillet. And remember we're doing our side dish with cabbage and apples. And there's a little bit of butter in there. And we're going to let that cook down for just a few minutes to soften the onions. I could add a little more butter to that. And again, the recipe is available. If you want to email me, I'll be happy to send this wonderful menu to you via email. So let's just let that set for a minute. I have my bow tie pasta, which is my pasta of choice today. And I've pre-cooked these and kept them overnight in the refrigerator with a little bit of oil on top, you can see, so they don't dry out. That's a great tip so you can pre-prep ahead of time. And we're going to add those. And our roast pork is already nicely browning on the bottom. And I'm trying to do all four sides, so I'm leaning it up against the side of the pan for leverage and browning the other side. This you step you can also do the night before and then just keep it in the refrigerator, bring to room temperature for half an hour and finish it off in the oven. I love to do pre-prep as much as I can, especially if you're a busy working mom, it's a good option to have. My cabbage is pre-sliced, and this is a fun thing to do. Wait until you see this. This is a scary tool, but it is my apple peel Cora slicer. And I use a firm apple. This is a green Granny Smith, which I even use for baking pies because it's a very consistent, hardcore apple. And they don't turn brown as quickly as a lot of your other apples. I wouldn't use a tool like this, say, on a Macintosh or a, a um, delicious apple because they're, they're soft, unless they're ripe from the orchard, and you can do that. So we put this on the prongs, move it up there, and then we're peeling our apple. How fun is that? Who said you can't have fun in the kitchen? And you've peeled and cored 
and sliced it. Okay, my mother said never play with your food, but now I do this because it's too fun. So there's no waste. Here's the peels. This is wonderful, too, if you want to make a potpourri on the stove with cinnamon. There's nothing like fresh apples. You cut the side like so, separated it into rings. These are great for making pancakes. You put these on the griddle and then pour your pancake batter over the top of it. Makes great apple pancakes. We're just going to slice them like this. Toss these in the skillet with our onions. Makes a great addition. Let's do another one. Just because you can never have too much flavor in your side dishes. Let's do another one. Okay, let's can you see it? I'll do it from the side on the prong. Move it up. And when I do potatoes like this, I slice them and I put them on the bottom and around the sides of a meatloaf pan. And you put your meatloaf mixture inside. And when you're done, you turn your meatloaf over and you have potato crusted meatloaf, if this were a potato. It's a really wow thing to do. So again, slice it. Let's toss this in. Let's turn over our pork. Tongs are a good tool to have in the kitchen as well. Smells really good. Put that there. Let's turn up the heat a little bit. Now, if you were doing a low-fat version, even lower than what we have, or let's say a no-carb version, you could certainly omit the noodles or the pasta, whichever you choose, and do just the cabbage and the onions and the apples. And it makes a great, great side dish as well. This is also how I would do applesauce if you wanted to do just plain apples and then your cabbage and noodles on the side. And I do my applesauce the same way. I peel up a whole bowl of apples and slice them with a little bit of sugar and lemon juice and I do them in the microwave. And it makes a wonderful, fresh and healthy applesauce, homemade. You know, homemade isn't that difficult. If you have good ingredients, you don't need fancy ingredients. Fresh and, and simple ingredients at the peak of their perfection is the way to go. So we're doing a little of this. And a little tossing on that. We can turn this up. And making sure we get most of this ground. touch. I'm going to add just a hint of sugar to help caramelize and take the bitterness out of the onions, which is a nice technique. If you recall from the last program I did, I gave you that tip about onions and how to make the onions sweet. If you're using a yellow onion and you want to have a sweet onion, but you don't have time to go to the store, you add a little bit of sugar to your water and soak the onions for about an hour and you have a sweet onion. So onions and sugar are very, very compatible. They go well together and it saves you a couple extra steps in the kitchen from having to buy things when you have them on hand if you know how to adapt to your kitchen. We're going to take and add our sliced cabbage. And you could do as much or as little as you like, depending on the amount that you need. I'm going to toss that together. Okay. 
and it doesn't take very long. All you're doing really is, at this point now, is wilting down the cabbage. Do you know what, um, when you're making cabbage, do you know what makes cabbage very strong to children and children say, I don't like cabbage? Is that people tend to overcook cabbage. For example, Brussels sprouts, which is the cabbage family, if you try just not cooking them as long, they'll have a better sweetness in flavor to them. You don't cook out all the flavor uh, when, when you cook them for too long. So you're going to see that you don't need much to wilt this down and keep it fresh and with a little bit of crunch and texture to it. And children are, are very sensitive, I find, to texture in foods. So um, you might find that they, they're, you'll be pleasantly surprised at their reaction to something like this. And it's always good to kind of change things up. And then to finish off the pork, this is a little extra step. Just kind of stand it on the end to sear it a little bit. And it doesn't take long to do. And I think I, I probably didn't mention, but you might want to use the skillet that goes in the oven. This is a great skillet and it's oven proof up to 400 degrees in the oven. So you could use a stainless steel pan if you have one. Make sure the um, handle is not heat sensitive. And um, you could also use a um, cast iron skillet, which I have in my kitchen. So we're just sealing that off. Experiment, too, with different uh, herbs and rubs on the outside of your pork. You can see how that just browns up nicely, and it kind of seals in all the flavors. And we're going to take this and pop it into the oven at 350 degrees for about 30 minutes to 45 minutes, depending on the thickness of your pork loin. Look at how vibrant and green the colors stay in your cabbage. And again, Shaw's just has a fabulous selection of uh, fresh produce in the meats. And they're so kind, again, to underwrite our programming today. Now, what variation do you think you could use on this? How about trying a purple cabbage with a red apple? That would be fun. Um, mix it up with a bok choy or a Chinese cabbage as well. So this is done. Remember we have a little bit of butter, uh, the uh, olive oil that's in the noodles. We're going to toss these in to complete our dish. The onions and the apples. Such a beautiful, beautiful and savory fall dish. You're going to love this. Absolutely fabulous. For seasoning, I'm going to put in a little bit of salt. Not much. You don't really need a lot. And the pasta is, of course, cooked to the package directions. How easy is that? We're going to take our serving dish and present it. Get your prettiest dish that you have. Always have nice serving plates available. After all, your family and friends deserve the best that you have. I'm using my favorite stir-fry skillet. I love this. It's big. It gives you plenty of room to saute everything that you need all at once. Cleans up beautifully. And again, anything you need for tips or resources, you contact me at my email address. I'll be happy to send them along with the recipes to help prepare these fabulous menus for your family and friends.
This is the side dish. A cabbage and apple and pasta. Now I want you to see how the pork comes out because it's so dramatic to see. We're gonna slice it up. This is how it comes out of the oven. Look at this. Is that fun? And again, I use the turkey sausage. You can see how it cooks all the way through. Another benefit too is that it keeps the meat very moist. Um, pork loin tends to be uh, very low fat, but it can be dry as well. So this is a great technique by browning it first and putting it into the oven. It keeps it very extremely moist. So I'm gonna take and just slice this and present it on a beautiful platter. And this is a really wow recipe that everybody's gonna love. They're gonna want the recipe, so make sure you keep it on hand. You can serve this at room temperature, hot out of the oven, and that's our fabulous Kielbasa stuffed pork loin. Fit for your family, your company, your friends. You're gonna have so many friends when you make this. And it's like, wow. So I wanna thank you today for joining me in Kathy Neptune's kitchen. As always, um, I'm happy to share my tips and techniques and recipes. Thank you again to Shaw's for their kindness and generosity. Try these recipes, you're gonna love them. You're gonna look like a star in your own kitchen. So thank you again and may the fork be with you.